Hey everyone. All right, we're gonna start testing this out. Can you give like a thumbs up or something if you can hear me? Give it a couple more minutes here. <clears throat> All right, I'm watching myself on my phone, watching myself on my computer, so this is new for me. This is a little weird. Um, it looks like there's a huge lag. My Sarah. Hello, everyone. Hey, Loretta. All right. Give it a couple more minutes. Sorry about this awkward silence here. You might hear my dogs chewing their bones in the background. All right, so it's 10 o'clock here. There is about a minute lag for me. Um, I am recording on my phone. I'm watching on my computer. My husband had to work, so I have no one here to help me if there are any technical difficulties um, or anything like that. So I apologize for that if anybody decides they can't see something. I'm gonna do my best. Um, I do have today's uh, meeting. Welcome to the meeting, everybody, our virtual puppy meeting. First one of the of June. Um, today's meeting is all about novel objects and how to work with your puppies with novel objects and um, how to expose them to those objects. So uh, I do have three of my four dogs uh, back here behind me uh, in our front room here, um, and we will. I do have some different items. I don't know what type of reactions they're going to have. Um, but I have two uh, transfer dogs that are our pets, um, Sabrina, who is about, uh, about 10 months old, I guess, and she was raised by Steph, uh, Steph James in um, St. Pete, and we adopted her a couple months ago. And then I have Eve, and um, those of you who know me personally know that that was the puppy I raised, and unfortunately, she was transferred um, about a week ago. So we have both of them here. And then I also have our beagle, our rescue beagle that we, she's also, um, I, we only adopted her recently as well. Uh, so we have a full house. The only dog we don't have, I don't have down today is um, our chihuahua. Uh, so, but the beagle had to be in because if the beagle's not included, she howls and bays. 
So for anybody who's ever had a beagle, you know what that's like. So she is included today. All right. Um, we do have, uh, I, I believe the other RMs are on the comments and they will try to catch some of the questions um, and we'll go from there. So first we're going to talk about novel objects uh, before we get to actually any demos. What is a novel object? A novel object is anything that is new and possibly unusual for that your puppy encounters. So even though it might be new, not new for you, you've seen it before or another dog has seen it before, that's fine. But if it's, you know, you're just bringing a puppy out of the kennel, um, there's a lot that's new in that situation. And so you might notice more reactions when they're younger versus when they're older. Um, I do want to point out that a reaction to a novel object is not necessarily a bad thing. Um, as we are looking more for recovery from the novel object reaction. So even if your puppy does have a reaction, they startle or they're very, um, you know, they're kind of not approaching it right away. Um, that's fine. We want to give them time and we're going to talk about how to do that. Um, and then we're looking for them not, um, not having that reaction later or on a second or third try. So that's more um, how we're gonna treat novel objects. So what are some examples of novel, novel objects? Um, you guys can give your own examples if you want in the um, comments if there's something that I don't name that you think is something that your puppy has encountered or one of your puppies you've raised has encountered and had a really hard time with. Um, but some examples would be statues are really big ones, especially ones of either people or dogs, um, just because the dogs are, tend to be a little confused as to why, um, why the dog is not, uh, you know, moving or the person's not moving when they approach them. Um, and I do want to say, I, uh, I do see that my camera is frozen on the computer. So I'm doing my best here. Um, we're going to keep going. Um, all right. So the other things we have are balloons, um, flags in the wind. Uh, so things that are blowing the wind. And I'm just going to quickly put a comment here that I see that the, okay, it looks like our camera's moving again. Um, <laughs> flags in the wind, things blowing in the wind singing or moving toys. Um, palm tree debris is a really big one in Florida. Um, and so palm tree debris is, uh, I've seen it during walk and talks. We'll come across, especially the kind of the bark part, but if something's just like fallen into the middle of the sidewalk, a lot of dogs have reactions to that. And I've seen that a couple times in walk and talks. And I know Catherine Arp said that one of her puppies actually reacted to palm tree debris. Um, feathers are a big one. Um, those of you that do walk and talks with me know that I always have a bag of feathers with me and we throw those out. Um, shells sometimes things are, and th these are a lot of things that are in Florida. Um, obviously our razors that are in other States, um, you know, you might, you may not, may or may not encounter shells or palm tree debris as often as we do here, uh, in Florida trash, anything that's like just trash on the ground, um, something generally out of place in an area that your pup is familiar with. So, um, my dog Eve, uh, in our yard. So she did get transferred for suspicion of cars, parked cars mainly and dogs. And I have not seen that before. So that could have been pressure from training. However, in our home, um, in our yard, if something fell, like a branch fell overnight, a big branch, and we went out in the backyard, she might bark at that and react to that. Um, that happens sometimes. Um, all right. Um, hopefully that my video is still catching up for everybody. Um, I My video on my computer screen has been frozen for a long time, so I apologize if it is not catching up for you. Um body language that your pup may demonstrate. So, okay, so now we found an, an object that your dog is going to react to. There are a lot of things that they can do. Um, compression, that means that their body lowers. They kind of crouch down or they just lower in general. Um, leaning away, sometimes leaning forward, but um, um, sometimes leaning forward. Thank you, Laura, for letting me know that I'm good for you. 
um, sometimes leaning forward, uh, but kind of like you'll see their back legs are still kind of back there. That's also a thing that they can do. So leaning away, leaning forward in kind of a weird way. Tongue flicks, um, ears back, um, slow to approach, right? So they're gonna be just very slow and cautious as they approach or they approach, but it's from a distance and they stay at a distance and then they gradually get in. Um, gradually decreases distance as the pup explores the item. So now they have, they approach from a distance, but now they're slowly moving closer and closer and closer, very jumpy. Um, so you can tell they're almost tense. And if you were to touch them, they would jump maybe a little bit. Um, and sometimes even hackled fur can be um, a sign that they're having um, some caution, their apprehension about an item. Again, hackles are, it depends, you need to have context for hackles. Hackles can happen at a lot of times, but essentially hackles indicate a, a sign of arousal. Um, and in this case, if your dog is showing some other signs, their fur might hackle up. So how do I help my puppy when he is uncertain about a novel object? Um, do not drag your puppy to the item. That's the first thing. Um, dragging your puppy is not going to help with their concern, their fear, their apprehension. I always like to give a lot of um, human sort of analogies. So this would be like you and I go up to the top of the Empire State Building. I have no problem going out onto the observation deck, but you really hate heights. What is going to be the better option for us? Is it going to be that I go out and you see all the other people going out on the observation deck and saying, wow, what a great view. This is so pretty. This is so amazing. Um, and you see with your own eyes that we're safe, that nothing's happening um, and everybody is really enjoying themselves. And then maybe you might gradually start to step out. Or is it better for me to just grab your arm and shove you all the way to the edge of the observation deck, right where the gate, where the fence is? I don't think that's probably the best way. And the same thing with um, with our puppy is we don't want to drag them to something that they're afraid of. Instead, you're going to, you know, we're going to talk about this, but you're going to, you know, sort of show them that it's not really, it's not that scary. It's it's fine. Um, you also do not want to pressure the puppy with food to move towards the item. So food to a dog is like money to us. Food to a lab especially is like money to us. Um, we'll do a lot for money, but it doesn't necessarily mean that we are okay with uh, whatever the situation is. So my example for this, my human example is I'm very afraid of spiders. And if somebody had a pet tarantula and said, well, I'm putting the tarantula on the ground and I'm putting a hundred dollar bill on his back, I might actually go over and snatch the bill, but I am not any less afraid of that tarantula. However, if they, you know, every time I come over, they hold the tarantula in their hand and they say, just, just touch his back leg. So I might touch. And then they say, you know what? That was so, that was so good. Here's a dollar. Good job. Um, so it's the same sort of thing. Instead of using the money or in the, or for puppies, the food to pressure them, use it as a reward for overcoming a little bit of that concern. Um, then we have uh, allow the puppy to have the full length of the leash to decide how close or far he wants to be from the object. So again, don't pull the puppy. Um, if you are out on a walk and you see something unusual, you're going to let that puppy have the whole length of the leash. If they want to stand six feet behind you, that's great, but um, if you know if they want to say uh, if they want to start moving closer, that's also great. Um, you can approach the item by letting them have the whole length of the leash, but not pull them towards it. Um, and then we don't want to coddle the puppy. Um, coddling would be like, oh, it's okay, it's okay, oh, 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 making a big deal about it. It's the whole, you know, rub some dirt on it and get over it type thing is the more matter of fact. Um, oh, my beagle is tearing, not tearing apart, but uh, pulling all the bedding out of the crate that I have back there. Um, we want to be more matter of a fact. Um, and... Uh, about the object and show that there's no need for concern for the object. Um, if it is safe to do so, 
you're gonna let the puppy have some time to explore the object, all right? Um, sorry about the shaking of the camera. I have a lab underneath the table who keeps, my little desk here who keeps uh, um, hitting it with our tail. So I apologize for the shaking of the camera occasionally. Uh, so if it's safe to do so, you wanna let the puppy have time to explore the object. Um, a statue that's just in the grass or you know on the sidewalk, that's totally fine to let the puppy explore it and check it out. Um, if it's something that could harm them or you know, obviously we're not going to let the puppy ex explore that particular object, just allow the puppy to watch it as much as they want from a distance. Um, and then you can approach letting the pup see you touch or interact with the item, but letting them keep their distance with the leash. So if you're out and about and you have them on leash, um, you can go up to the statue and tap it, or you can go up to the bag that's stuck on a fence and you can tap it and let them say, see it, but you're gonna let them keep their distance as well. So you're gonna be kind of stretched out here. Um, can I give some examples of matter of fact talk? So um, I'm gonna do that hopefully in just a second with some of the items I have, but um, um, I think that some of that would be like, you walk up to it and you're like, oh, it's okay, look at this, this is fine, and you just touch it. Um, I, I don't like to see when people go, it's okay, it's okay, it's okay, petting, 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 petting the dog, maybe picking up if it's a tiny puppy. Um, instead, it's just, this is fine, tap, 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 look at that. And then if the puppy approaches it, good dog, walk away. Um, if it's, if it, if it, they approach very quickly. Um, again, if they start to approach and uh, on their own, you can use treats in that situation. You can give a treat if they come all the way up and then you can give a treat for that. But don't take your treats out and lure the puppy to the item. Because again, that's the pressure part. Um, all right, let's see if I can find any questions here that are not being answered or I can answer on here. Um, things going so fast that I'm just not for sure where we are. All right. I'm gonna go ahead and um, start to use some novel objects with my dogs. We'll see what type of reactions they have. Um, again, Eve was transferred for suspicion, um, although she usually doesn't have novel object issues. Um, and Sabrina um, has had some novel object issues in the past. Uh, so we'll see, we'll see. Sometimes she acts very, um, I think of dogs are ripping up the tag off the bed, sorry. I'm gonna have to go take care of that. Just as I'm gonna move this um, camera down a little bit so we can see back here. Let's see, sorry guys. Oh, there we go. All right, so hopefully everyone can see okay. All right, I'm going to make sure that we have things tucked away here. We'll put the dog bed back in that they're tearing up. Okay. All right, guys. So the first thing that I have, so the black lab is Eve, if anybody doesn't know. The yellow lab is Sabrina. She loves carrying toys in her mouth. And then this is our beagle. Our beagle, she only has one eye. Um, she's a rescue. Her name is Zelda. So we have our three dogs here. And I'm going to, they're very excited because I'm standing up now. Uh, I have a couple of things that we are going to use for novel objects, and we'll see what type of reactions they give us. So the first thing we have is a feather boa. I'm going to go put this on the ground. Um, oops, sorry, girl. Um, Sabrina has had reactions in the past. And that's my chihuahua barking in the background. And we have, obviously nobody cares about the boa. They think it's a toy. Okay, girls. Draco. All right. So they're very excited. Everybody's very excited. Stop. I have a feeling they're all going to think that all these things are toys and not very novel. Um, next, we have a baby Yoda. Baby Yoda here. Um, Chuba just sent it to me as a gift. <laughs> and he does uh, make some noise. So I'm going to go put him down here a little bit so you guys can see them. Girls, girls. All right, so he's gonna make. So again, they're not really reacting to it. They're very excited right now. 
everybody thinks this is playtime. Draco. All right, this one usually gets some dogs. Sabrina, stop. Stop. This one usually gets some dogs at my Back to Basics. Um, Zelda. Sorry, guys, it's a madhouse here now. <laughs> All right, again, was hoping my husband would be here to take care of some dogs. All right, so we have our mummy dog here. Eve, stop. We have our mummy dog, and he does growl, and he barks. Um, so, okay, everybody's, okay, everybody calm. Calm down. All right, no, ma'am, no, no. All right, this usually gets dogs, but I don't know, everybody's very excited today. Girl, stop. Stop. I don't even think I can put them down right now. All right, so nobody's having reactions to anything here. I'm going to do for our last thing. I'm going to push the girls out of the front room here for a second. Um, and I do have a balloon over here in a container they have not seen. Um, I'm going to try to put that out. Um, um, let's see here. I'll try to see. Yeah, I'm having trouble putting it on the floor um, because they're jumping on me so much for the items. They think that we're playing. Um, so I know somebody said to put the item on the floor, sit on the floor with them. Um, at the moment, I'm not really sure I can do that. They're all very, um, they're very revved right now. Uh, I thought that they'd be a little calmer and they would be able to react a little more. So I'm going to push the girls out of the room for a second, past the baby gate, put the balloon down on the floor here in the middle, and then we'll let them back in and see what the balloon does for them. Come here, girls. got the balloon. We'll see what happens. I don't know. I can't make any promises. Working with dogs and children, right? That's not what they say in show business is not the greatest. All right. All right. So we got a little bit of a reaction there from, especially from Sabrina. I'm going to show her. Come here, Zelda. So let the labs look at it. So again, we're just letting um, the dogs have that moment to sort of check it out. Um, Sabrina still has a little bit of unsure. <laughs> She's trying to get the toy now that's attached to it, of course. All right, and so you might have seen a little bit of reaction. It was on my side of the balloon though, so I'm not sure. All right, let go, drop it. All right, so my, my well-planned meeting with all of my novel objects has not worked, um, of course. Um, okay. It might have been different if the dog was alone, yes. Um, again, um, I don't, because my husband's not here today, um, being um, completely alone would not have worked well. Uh, so I apologize for that because uh, especially the beagle would have been howling and barking no matter where we were, where she was in the bedroom or whatever. And we have a small house, so you would have been able to hear it. Um, so that's live TV for you. <laughs> um, what are some questions you guys have? All right. So Kate said you did see Sabrina's reaction. Um, she has had worse reactions before. Um, so sometimes I'll have even just like a broom under our carport because uh, I was cleaning or whatever and she'll come out and she will kind of very slowly have to go in and sniff it. Um, she was a little faster at the balloon than she is with um, things that are out in our carport sometimes that she is not familiar with. Um, our carport's on the back side of our house in a fenced area, so... Um, it's more like our patio. Um, 
let's see here. Um, so yeah, so it is, yes, thanks Kathy. It is about the technique about how you approach it, really just kind of matter of fact. Um, so can I talk a little bit about her reaction in the body language we saw? Um, hopefully you saw, it was, it was fairly quick, I think. Hopefully you saw that with this is the balloon and she kind of went in, she kind of went back a little bit. She jumped a little bit back and then she was kind of watching it. Um, she got um, a little more, she, you know, Eve went up to it and kind of bopped it with her nose and Sabrina went up a little bit, then backed away just a little bit. So again, there's the backing the way, there's the being jumpy. Um, uh, but then eventually, because, I think because it was tied, I had it weighted down with a dog toy. Um, I think that was, that helped her uh, approach it more quickly. Um, and additionally, because the other dogs were not really reacting to it, uh, I also think that that helped. Um, shadows at night, certain way to handle that. Um, I mean, I would just, uh, Christine, can you like elaborate? Like, do you mean like, um, is the dog chasing the shadows at all? Or are they just like scared of the shadows? Let's see if I can catch that. Um, towards pools if they are novel as well. Uh, yes, I would say um, for pools, uh, we don't want to force the dog into the pool. That is a good point. And it sort of is a novel object. Um, when a dog is first approaching a pool um, and they, I mean, you know, I've seen dogs step off not realizing that it was water and thinking it was another piece of floor um, and be totally surprised. However, you see a lot of dogs that we have that don't particularly like pools or are apprehensive of them at first. Um, again, don't pull your dog into the pool. Don't push your dog into the pool. Instead, you know, you get in the pool, you sit on the steps with them. Um, sit near, you know, even if they don't want to get on the steps, you sit on the steps and then maybe they'll get in with you. Um, if you have another dog, again, you guys saw that having Eve here with Sabrina and the balloon, she quickly got over the balloon. Um, but your another dog could always help with, uh, that sort of issue as well. Um, let's see. All right. Catherine looks like she's replying to about, uh, the shadows a little bit there in the comments, but apprehensive and backing away. Yeah. Um, just in general, it is good for you to remember that we want to, you want to make sure you are, um, walking your dog in the evening and later at night when it's very dark because things do look very different in the dark. Um, I have one story. Somebody lived on a, like a round neighborhood block and they always went the same way. And one night she, um, went the opposite way and didn't realize that when you went the opposite way, you were actually walking towards parked cars. And because it was nighttime, lights were shining off of the actual headlights and the puppy was very apprehensive, not understanding what she was seeing. Um, so you definitely want to make sure you just like walk. And again, you don't want to coddle. You want to just be very, very matter of fact. You don't want to necessarily pull the dog in that situation. So maybe the razor in that situation walked a little, tried to walk a little bit the opposite way, but then turned around and walked the normal way. Um, so yeah, um, let's see here. Um, all right. Sorry, I'm trying to look through the, the comments here. Um, going out into the rain. Hold on, I'm trying to see the whole thing. Um, so yeah, I wouldn't necessarily consider, I mean, rain can be novel in the beginning. I wouldn't consider rain to be necessarily a novel object all the time, more just something they don't particularly like. Um, and ha having them go out into the rain for busy, I mean, you, at some point they do have to go out because they do have to get used to it. I would, you know, try to go in the beginning. I would try to go when it's just sprinkling and not pouring, hopefully. I know, in, um... Right now it's summer and we have a lot of random heavy downpours. So sometimes that's not possible. Um, so 
you just have to sort of kind of make that work. Uh, like I said, I would start out with damp, you know, damp grass in the morning, making sure that you're going out in the morning so that the grass is wet and the puppy starts to get used to that feel. Um, and um, then looking for when it's sprinkling or looking for puddles to just kind of play in and walk through. You can also do a lot of things. If you have a novel object that they can't go approach, but you can watch from a distance, you can also do what we call, um, uh, oh my gosh, passive socialization, where you're playing with a dog and the object or the situation is happening at a distance. Um, that can also help the pup, especially if you can't approach the item or playing in a puddle, for example, might help the dog get used to having uh, their feet wet. So, um, when is the end point where you stop and turn back? That's a great question. So, um, you definitely want to sort of watch how severe your puppy's reaction is. Most of our dogs, I mean, they are bred for temperament. So most of our dogs are going to have an initial reaction and then they're going to start to recover. Um, but you will occasionally have a dog that either has something that's very scary to it or a dog that has lower confidence and it's harder. So um, I would let the puppy be at the end of the leash, for example. And if I go over to it and I tap let's say it's a statue for argument's sake, I tap the statue and a few times and the puppy is still kind of way at the end of the leash after 10, 15 seconds, then I'm going to walk away. We might reapproach again if that's something that I can approach easily, like, like it's on a, a walk that we do often, I'll come back to it. Um, or even if it's like at the beginning of the walk and then at the end of the walk, I could come back to it. Um, so you don't want to stand there forever. Uh, if you're scared, you're scared. Um, again, if you, if I take you up to the top of the Empire State Building and we stand there for 20 minutes and all you do is make one little step outside the door frame of the observation deck and you don't go any further, you probably aren't going to go any further on that day. Um, it doesn't have to be 20 minutes. That was just an example for a human example, but you know, you just sort of have to watch your pup and see, is he making progress? Is he coming a little closer? Is he looking a little more relaxed? If he's not, then, you know, increase your distance even if uh, that's happening and see where they are. What distance can you get to from the item where your pup does start to look more relaxed? End on that more relaxed note and then, you know, move away. Um, and then try to reapproach it again at a later date um, and, you know, repeat the that until... Um, you have a much better start. So the puppy starts to look a lot better. Sorry. Um, so how do you deal with surprising loud truck sounds when walking the pup? Um, again, so that would be more about noise than novel objects. Most of the time, you obviously cannot allow the puppy to go see a loud truck up personally. Um, I would, again, um, I would one, make sure you're not, playing into that dog um, being upset, just kind of matter of fact. Um, two, you can um, increase your distance and watch the trucks from a distance. So let's say, I think you said you're, this is in your neighborhood and you are doing um, con those construction in your neighborhood. Um, I think that in that situation, um, you can maybe walk up like a, uh, I'm sorry, a driveway and just stand and watch the trucks from a distance. Um, and again, you can also do that passive socialization in that situation where you play at a slight distance from the trucks where the trucks are often, but you like play with like, or bring a good toy or something like that. Um, how often do pups that have reactions to novel objects continue to have problems with novel objects when they come IFT? Um, I, I don't have like an actual statistic for you right now. Um, it does happen. And just like any behavior that we see, if it's, if it's something that's like repeated. Um, so for example, Sabrina, um, I think her razor would agree that it was something that we saw repeatedly. And then, um, so, you know, or for example, even Eve having suspicion about certain things. Um, again, it wasn't the same thing that she got released for or transferred for. But it was still, um, uh, you know, suspicion regardless. So those type of things, if you are seeing it frequently as a puppy raiser, 
they could come back in training with pressure of training. Um, the pressure of training sometimes really brings back behaviors that we have seen in the past and we thought we had kind of worked over. However, um, um, at the same time, novel objects, typically, especially when you get a baby puppy and you have a baby puppy who is constantly um, showing a little bit of concern, not constantly, but often showing a little bit of concern about novel objects, you can really help shape that um, experience for them by really making sure that you uh, are very, you know, deliberate in how you approach those items and repeated exposures always helps. Um, so yes, can it happen? Of course. Um, most likely it's going to be puppies that we see throughout the puppy raising period that they keep having novel object reactions that, um, that they might continue to, that might, that might, uh, pull over into training. Um, all right. And I do think we are close to the end here. <clears throat> um, we can continue to answer questions in the comments. Um, I do apologize. Now, now all of my dogs are nice and quiet. I'm sure as soon as I grab baby Yoda or this, the dog here, they're going to jump up. Um, and if you're one of my raisers, I'm sure you will see the, especially the singing, the growling dog at some point in Back to Basics when we get to those again. Um, we can definitely, um, finish answering questions in the comments for you guys. Um, but I hope that everybody, uh, got something out of this class and I hope that you enjoy your, um, your weekend and we will see you later. All right. Thank you guys.